So this video is going to be a departure from my traditional physics videos. This is actually going to be a tutorial on SAT math questions, and in particular, on math questions that revolve around the discriminant. You may have learned about the discriminant when studying quadratic equations in high school, and I've noticed as an SAT tutor poring over these recently released digital examinations that a good handful of questions revolve around the use of the discriminant. So we're going to see how to apply that in a couple of different questions in this video. Here is an example question from the first SAT digital test that's available online. And you might want to pause the video and read the problem to yourself before listening on. But in this question, we are told that the parabola given by this equation and the straight line given by this equation, they intersect and they intersect at exactly one point. And we're going to be talking about the significance of that in just a moment. But in general, when two equations intersect one another, or I should say when the graphs of two equations intersect, that means we can set the equations equal to each other. So we can begin solving this problem by setting negative x squared plus 9x minus 100 equal to c. So we're basically just setting the two equations equal to one another. And in order to solve this kind of quadratic equation, we need to rewrite it in a standard form. So in standard form, it means we need to set the equation equal to zero. And to do that, we would subtract c from both sides. So now we would have negative x squared plus 9x minus 100 minus c. And on the right hand side, that would be equal to zero. So that's a standard form for a quadratic. And this quadratic has a negative one as the coefficient of x squared. That's fine. But in general, it's better to have it as a positive. So my personal preference and recommendation to you would be to divide each term by negative one. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of flip the sign of all the terms. So now we would have a positive x squared minus 9x plus 100 plus c, and then the other side is still equal to zero. Now, the question again noted that these two graphs intersect at exactly one point. So what that means is that there's only going to be one solution to this equation. And that becomes important in terms of the discriminant. So let's take a look at the discriminant now. So the discriminant is an equation that you might recognize from the quadratic formula. It's kind of a component of the quadratic formula. And the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And there's three possible values that the discriminant can take on. It can be a negative value, it could equal 0, or it could be a positive value. Now, if it is equal to 0, then what that means is that we would have one real solution to our quadratic equation. And that's exactly what this question is asking for. Because recall, it said that they intersect at exactly one point, so that means that there is one solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our quadratic equation, and we're going to set the discriminant equal to 0. And perhaps before doing that, we can define our values of a b and c and then we can plug them into this discriminant formula right here now a is the coefficient of x squared so in this case a would equal one b is the coefficient of the x term so in this case that is negative nine and then the c is a little tricky because the c stands for a constant and this entire term is a constant because c is a constant so c is a constant meaning that it's just equal to some unknown number obviously 100 is a constant so when we add c to 100 we would still have a constant so in this case again the value of c is going to be 100 plus c now we're going to Take advantage of the fact that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is going to equal 0. And we'll begin now by plugging in the values. So for b, we put in the negative 9. For a, we put in the 1. And then for c, we'll put in 100 plus c. Now all we need to do is solve this for c, and we would have this question answered. So negative 9 squared, of course, is 81. We could then subtract 81 from both sides of this equation cancel it out there. Now you could either distribute the negative 4 or divide by negative 4. I think it's easier to divide both sides by negative 4. So we can cancel it on the left side, leaving that side as 100 plus c. On the other side, you have a negative divided by a negative, so that's a positive. 
and that would be 81 fourths. You could then subtract 100 from both sides of the equation. And remember, on the new digital SAT, you can use a calculator for all parts. So if you're not comfortable with the subtraction, that's all right. You could use your calculator, do 81 fourths minus 100. And I don't know why I wrote C squared there, pardon me. When you do that subtraction, you would get negative 319 over 4. And if we go back to the question, we can hopefully find that in the answer choices. So let's take a look back up here. Lo and behold, yes, what is the value of C? It's negative 319 over four. So that's a great example of a question that involves the so-called discriminant. And on this very test, there was another question that involved the use of the discriminant. Why don't we take a look at that one next? So here is that next math question. Same test, practice test number one, but it's the second module. And this time the equation is neatly already organized in a standard form. You'll notice that the equation is already set equal to zero. Now if we read the question, and again, you might want to pause the video and do that yourself. It says here that the equation has no real solutions. So when a quadratic equation has no real solutions, that means that the discriminant is less than zero. So what we would do is we would take our discriminant, our b squared minus 4ac, and we're going to make that less than 0. Now to apply that, we would have to identify the values of a, b, and c. So let's go back to our quadratic equation. We can see that the coefficient of x squared is just 1, so that means a is equal to 1. The coefficient of x is negative 34, so that means b is negative 34, and then the constant is identified in this case just by c. They seem to like the letter c for constants, so we'll plug in those values. Here we go. The b is negative 34. Don't forget to square that. The a is 1, and then the c is just represented as c. Now let's simplify this by squaring the negative 34, and once again you can use a calculator, so that's 1,156 minus 4 times 1 times c is just 4c. We subtract the 1156 from both sides of the equation, and then divide by negative 4. Now the astute student would notice that when you divide an inequality by a negative number, then the direction of this symbol inverts or reverses itself. So again, we're going to divide both sides of this inequality by a negative number that flips the direction of the inequality. So now we actually have c is greater than, and this is 289. Now the question asks us, what is the, quote, least possible value of n, in fact? And that's interesting because we haven't really solved for n, but this is just classic college board chicanery. It's just trickiness. They like to do this kind of thing. Let's clean it up a little. It says C is greater than n. So pause the video and give that some consideration. We know C is greater than 289. And then the college board comes along and says, well, C is greater than n. So these two statements are equivalent to one another. And then when you line them up in that manner, you can hopefully see that n is simply 289. So that was the correct answer to this free response question. Another good example of the use of the discriminant in solving SAT math questions. And if you're still not convinced of the significance of the discriminant on the new digital SAT, well, here's yet another question. This is from the second practice test, the first module. Pause the video and give it a try on your own first before listening on. This question says that this system of equations has exactly one distinct real solution. So if we go back up to our little discriminant chart, when you have one real solution, you can see that the discriminant is going to equal zero. So for this system of equations, once we get to the discriminant, we're going to set it equal to zero. But before we do that, we have to set these equal to one another. So we're going to go ahead, very similar to the first question we did, x squared plus 8x plus a is equal to negative 1.5. You want to rewrite that in a standard form, so you would add 1.5 to both sides of the equation. And then we have it in the standard form. Let's identify our a. In this case, it's equal to 1 because the coefficient of x squared is 1, b is 8, and then c is this constant right here. So it's the a plus 1.5. Because there's exactly one solution, we can set this discriminant equal to 0. We'll go ahead and plug in. Let's square that 8 to make it into a 64 minus... 4, because 4 times 1, and then times that parenthetical term. Again, you could distribute the 4. I think it's easier to do it this way. Subtract 64 from both sides of the equation. 
then divide both sides by negative 4. It would cancel it on the left side. On the right side, you divide negative 64 by negative 4, you get 16. And then finally, subtract the 1 and a half from both sides, and you would get A is equal to 14.5. So that would be the correct answer to that question. And you guessed it, from this very same test, there was another one. This one's very direct. It simply says, how many distinct real solutions does the given equation have? So in this case, we can use our discriminant table directly. We can enumerate our A, B, and C. A, you can see, is 5, B is 10, and C is 16. Notice the equation was already written in standard form because it was set equal to 0. We're going to take those values there, and we're going to plug them into the discriminant. And because, again, there are, or they're asking for how many solutions, we're just going to evaluate that. So let's plug in. And when you simplify that, you should get negative 220. Remember, you can use your calculator. So that's the value of the discriminant. It's negative, so it's less than 0. Well, how many real solutions would we have if the discriminant is less than 0? We would have no real solutions. So 0 real solutions is the correct answer to that question. Of course, I could go on with more questions revolving around the discriminant, but again, if you're planning on taking the SAT, the digital SAT, anytime soon, I highly recommend that you get acquainted with the discriminant and the different kinds of solutions that accompany different values of the discriminant.